welcome to uh, lecture 7 on measure and integration. If you recall in the previous lecture, we had started looking at the countably additive set functions on intervals and we proved some uh, properties um, of such uh, uh, countably additive set functions. We will uh, recall that the theorem that we were proving and then continue the proof and if time permits, we will look at a characterizations of uh, countably additive set functions defined on algebras uh, in the later part of the lecture. So, let us just recall what we were proving in the last lecture. We were trying to show that if mu is a um, finitely additive set function defined on the collection of all left open right closed intervals, which was denoted by i tilde. Uh, if such a, a finitely additive set function is given with a property that mu of any finite interval is finite. So, mu of left open right close interval a b is finite for every a and b, then we want you to characterize uh, such uh, countable additive properties of such functions um, uh, and related to uh, a class of functions on the real line. So, the claim of the theorem is that then there exists a monotonically increasing function f from r to r such that the value mu of the open left open right closed interval a b is given by f b minus f of a for every a and b belonging to r. So, uh, we want to show that given a we wanted to show that given a, a finitely additive set function on the class of all left open right closed intervals, it must arise from a monotonically increasing right continuous function f with the relation that the value mu of a b is given by the difference f b minus f of a. And in addition, if mu is here mu was only finitely additive, if we assume mu is countably additive, then f this function f can be selected to be uh, right continuous. So, let us just recall how did we define this function. We looked at uh, the function f defined by f at a point x is defined as the measure mu of the interval uh, 0 to x, if x is bigger than 0 and it is 0, if x is equal to 0 and is minus mu of x to 0 closed at 0, if x is less than 0. So, this was the definition of uh, um, the function f and we proved the property that this function f indeed is monotonically increasing. And for that, if you recall, we use the fact that f is uh, the measure mu, uh, this uh, mu is a countably, uh, is a finitely additive set function. So, in uh, next we, if we assume that mu is countably additive, we wanted to show that this function f is right continuous at every point x in R. And we had started looking at the proof when x is bigger than or equal to 0. So, we had proved that for x bigger any point x bigger than or equal to 0, f is right continuous at the point x is equal to 0. So, uh, today we will start with proving the uh, other part uh, remaining uh, part of the proof namely if x is less than 0, then also f is right continuous at x. So, let us look at the proof. So, we want to show f is right continuous at a point x, where x is less than 0. So, here is the point 0 and here is x. So, to show right continuity at the point x, let us take. So, let x n belong to r. So, let us take uh, points x n a sequence in r say that x n decreases to x. That means, x n is converging all the x n's are on the right side of x and is converging to x. So, um, because it all the points x n's are on the right side of, um, so here may be x n, um, x 1, here may be x 2 and so on. So, after some stage x n has to cross over the point 0, the value 0. So, what we are saying is without loss of generality assume that 
all the x n's are bigger than 0 for every n, because x n is going to converge to x and x is less than 0. So, at some stage it has to cross over. So, analyzing we can start analyzing the sequence from that point onwards or one writes this as without loss of generality the proof is not changed if we assume x n is less than 0 for every n. So, here is the situation here is the point x here is the point 0 and here is the point x 1. So, now uh, let us uh, uh, look at so here is x 2 and so on. So, let us uh, observe that the interval left open right close 0 can be written as x 2 x 1 union x 1 to 0. So, I can write this as from this point to x 1 and from this point onwards to this one. And now, this uh, interval x to x 1 I am going to split further into a union of intervals. So, my claim is that this x 2 x 1 is same as x 1 to x 2 union x 2 to x 3 union x 3 to x 4 and so on. So, we are going to claim is that this is same as x n plus 1 comma x n left open right close union n uh, n equal to 0 to infinity um, union x 1 0. So, the interval x 2 x 1 this part we are splitting it into left open right close left open right close and so on. And because this is true this this is the equality because x n is decreasing to x. So, at any point here in between if I take from uh, any point in between uh, x and uh, x 1 then that stage has to be crossed over uh, by some x n. So, that point will belong here. So, this the interval x 2 x 1 is a union of the intervals left open x n plus 1 to close x n n equal to 0 to infinity. So, and also observe that these intervals are all disjoint. So, these are all disjoint intervals. So, I can write mu of using countable additive property of uh, the set function I can write this is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity mu of x n plus 1 x n plus mu of x 1 to 0. So, here we have used the fact that mu countably additive implies this property is true. And now, this right hand side is a sequence of uh, non negative real, uh, real numbers possibly extended real numbers. So, I can write this as limit k going to infinity sigma n equal to 0 to k mu of x n plus 1 x n plus mu of x 1 to 0 close here 0. So, now we will write everything in terms of f. So, mu by definition mu of x to 0 is minus f of x is equal to limit k going to infinity summation n equal to 0 to k and this is nothing but f of x n minus f of x n plus 1 plus f of um, f of x 1 to 0. So, that is in fact minus f of x 1. So, now uh, let us uh, uh, note what is this. So, this is the limit k going to infinity and uh, what is uh, this sum? This is it starts with n equal to uh, uh, n equal to 0 will give you x 0 that is not. So, let us um, so there was a uh, mistake here I should have written as union from n equal to 1 because it is 1 to 2 right 1 to 2 and so on. So, that was the mistake here. So, this sum is from n equal to 1 to n equal to 1 to n equal to 1 to k. So, what is this sum? So, n equal to 1. So, that gives you f of x 1 minus f of x 2 
plus f of x 2 minus f of x 3 and so on plus f of um, x uh, n equal to k. So, that is uh, x k minus f of x k plus 1 and now, so that is this part this sum and minus f of x 1. So, now we observe that in this x 1, x 2, x 2, these will cancel out and what is left with this is equal to f of x 1 minus f of x k plus 1 minus f of x 1. And now, in this equation, so this cancels with this. So, minus f of x, oh sorry, there is a limit uh, outside. So, limit of this k going to infinity. So, what we get is f of x is equal to, so this gives us that f of x is equal to limit k going to infinity of f of x k plus 1 and that proves the fact that f is right continuous at x uh, in the case when x was less than 0. So, hence f is right continuous for every x. So, this proves uh, the theorem that uh, if mu on the class of all left open right closed intervals is a measure is countably additive with the property that mu of a b is equal uh, mu of a b is finite for every a b in R, then this is implies there exists a function f which is monotonically increasing which is right continuous. So, monotonically increasing right continuous such that mu of a b is equal to f b minus f of a. So, this is uh, says, so what we have shown is that to every monoton every uh, countably additive set function um, mu on left open right closed intervals you can associate a monotonically increasing right continuous function. And uh, we will uh, next show, uh, so this is uh, proved, uh, this completes the proof uh, the of the fact that to every monotonically increasing right continuous function, we can associate a mono, uh, to every a countable additive uh, set function on uh, the class of intervals, we can associate a um, monotonically increasing right continuous function uh, with this property. In fact, the converse of this statement also holds. So, what will be the converse of uh, such a, a statement? The converse of such a statement would be that if you are given a monotonically increasing right continuous function f, then we can define a, a, a set function mu on left open right closed intervals in such a way that this equation is satisfied, this relation is satisfied. So, that will prove that the only way monotonically, uh, only way we can construct uh, countably additive set functions on uh, the class of intervals is via uh, monotonically increasing right continuous functions. So, the converse part of the theorem says the following, let f be a monotonically increasing function from R to R. So, define mu f a set function from the class of all left open right closed intervals as follows. For any two real numbers a and b, we want to define what is mu f of the close uh, left open right clo closed intervals a b. So, because this is the property has to be satisfied by uh, f. So, that itself gives us the defining property of uh, the set function mu. So, mu f of the left open right closed interval is defined as the difference f b minus f of a for all real numbers a and b. And now, the question comes what happens if b is equal to plus infinity or a is equal to minus infinity or both of them. So, in that case we uh, write this as 
or mu f of the infinite interval minus infinity to b. So, it is open on the left side and close on the right side b. So, it is a left open right close interval on the real line. So, it what we do is we take uh, the um, definition as f b minus f of minus x x going to infinity. So, as x goes to infinity minus x will go to minus infinity. So, we, uh, we are using uh, we are uh, uh, defining it via limits. So, look at the interval minus x to b left open. So, that is the value of the uh, mu of f and then take the limit of that as x goes to infinity. So, this is a definition of uh, mu f of minus infinity to b and similarly, if it is on the right side. So, if a to infinity, so what we define as take the interval a to closed x. So, then the value of that will be f of x minus f of a and now take the limit of that as x goes to infinity. So, for the infinite interval unbounded on the right side left open right close. So, a to infinity is defined as limit x going to infinity f of x minus f of a and if it is the whole real line then we define mu of f of the whole real line to be limit x going to infinity of f of x minus f of minus x. So, look at the interval minus x to x and let both sides go to infinity. So, this is the way we define mu of f and now note that this is a generalization of the length function. If f is the identity function namely f of x is equal to x that is a monotonically increasing function, then this is nothing but b minus a. So, mu of a b is nothing but b minus a. So, this mu f is nothing but the length function when f is a monotonically increasing function. And um, uh, one can write down a proof of this on the lines of when we proved that the length function is countably additive. So, on the same lines one can um, write down the proof of the fact that this set function mu f is also countably additive. Uh, one can wonder where one will be using the fact that f is right continuous. Okay. So, the fact where we will be using the right continuity of this f to prove uh, that it is monotonically increasing uh, to prove that mu f is countably additive. So, this f is monotonically increasing we can define this mu f is finitely additive. But to prove countable additivity, we need f to be a right continuous function. So, if f is right continuous, then one can write down a proof similar to that of the case of the length function. Uh, one uses the fact right continuity because one has to deal with the intervals which are left open and right closed. So, uh, we suggest uh, that uh, if you are keen to know a proof of this, you better write a proof yourself uh, trying to uh, see uh, that the steps uh, given for the proof of the length function is countable additive can be suitably modified to do this. So, we leave it as a uh, exercise and if you feel it is uh, too tough an exercise, let us assume this and go ahead. So, so mu f is a finally additive sets function and using if f is right continuous one proves that mu f is also countably additive. So, this gives us uh, this is this function mu f um, is called the set function induced by uh, the increasing function f. So, this gives us a complete characterization of non trivial countably additive set functions. Why non trivial? Because we are looking at mu of uh, the left open right closed interval a b to be finite in terms of functions which are monotonically increasing and right continuous. So, in some sense there is a correspondence between uh, measures on the uh, class of all intervals and monotonically increasing right continuous functions. In case uh, that uh, countably additive set function mu has the property that mu of the whole real line is finite, then uh, one can select this monotonically increasing function to be mu of minus infinity to x, because then this is defined. We do not have to restrict the fact that 
mu of a b is finite. That will be true anyway because this is finite. So, a more canonical choice for the monotonically increasing right function, uh, monotonically increasing right continuous function is mu of minus infinity to x when mu of the whole space r is finite. So, in that case this function f is called the distribution function on r and uh, this uh, uh, plays a role in the theory of probability where the monotonically increasing right continuous functions uh, are studied uh, via what are called probability distributions. We will not go into that. So, we will just uh, make a note of it in case uh, we have finite uh, condition that mu of r is finite, uh, we will take mu f of x to be this function. So, uh, this proves the, um, this, so we have characterized all countably additive set functions on the class of all intervals. The aim uh, what we shall do now next is the following, we will study what are called uh, set functions on a general class of uh, sets called algebras. Where, uh, so, let us start with looking at A an algebra of subsets of a set x and mu a set function defined on this algebra taking non negative real values. So, taking values in 0 to infinity. Then we want to show that the following holds that if mu is finitely additive and mu of the set B is finite okay, for a set B in the algebra A, then mu of the difference B minus A is equal to mu B minus mu of A whenever A is in the algebra and A is a subset of B. So, what we are saying is the following. So, let us take two, let us take two sets A and B belonging to the algebra A and we are given of course, A is a subset of B and mu of B is finite. So, here is the set B and A is a part of it. So, this B, so that is A. So, this part is A. So, we can write B as A union B minus A. So, this is the part B minus A. Right? And note that A and B minus A both are disjoint sets. So, B is written as a finite union, in fact union of the two sets A and B minus A and their pairwise disjoint and mu finitely additive implies that mu of B is equal to mu of A plus mu of B minus A. And now, let us note that this all are real numbers, mu of b is a real number because it is finite, mu of a is a real number because a is a subset of b. So, that is uh, and mu of a will be less than or equal to mu of b that is finite. Okay. So, uh, that is, uh, so these are all, uh, this is a equation in real numbers anyway. Uh, anyway, that is not really important here, but note that all are non-negative quantities. So, that implies that mu of b is bigger than or equal to mu of a. That is one thing that we observe that because this is non-negative. So, this is, so this also implies that mu of a is less than or equal to mu of b which is finite. right? So, that implies mu of a is finite. So, in this equation now I can say all are real numbers. So, I can manipulate this as equation in real numbers. So, this equation implies that if I take it on the other side. So, mu of b minus mu of a is equal to mu of b minus a. So, that is what we wanted to prove and note here we have used the fact that mu of b is finite and hence mu of every subset of it is finite whenever that set is in the algebra. right? So, we can manipulate this as a equation only when they are real numbers. If they are equal to plus infinity or minus uh, plus infinity at any one of them, then I cannot transpose them on the other side and write this equation. So, we have used the fact that mu is finitely additive 
and mu of b is finite that implies for every subset a of b which is in the algebra mu of a is also finite and mu of b minus a is equal to mu of b minus mu of a. And in particular supposing I take b equal to a, so this gives mu of empty set is equal to 0. So, in particular mu of empty set is 0 if mu is finitely additive and mu for at least one set b is finite. So, these are consequences of a set function being finitely additive. So, what we are trying to show is if a set function is finitely additive what are the possible consequences. We showed finite additivity implies monotone right? and if b is finite then I can interchange and write mu of b minus a to be equal to this. Finite additive plus mu of at least one set is finite implies mu of phi is equal to 0 and let us, uh, so mu of monotone that we have already shown. So, let us look at the next property that uh, that is a very important thing uh, characterization of countable additiveness of the set function. So, suppose mu of phi is equal to 0, then we want to claim that mu is countably additive if and only if mu is both finitely additive and countably subadditive. So, we want to characterize countable additive property of the set function defined on an algebra in terms of it being finitely additive and countably subadditive. So, let us uh, prove these properties. So, let us start by one way. So, let us assume that mu is countably additive to show mu is finitely additive. and countably subadditive. So, let us uh, look at the first thing to show it is finitely additive what we have to do is. So, let A be equal to a disjoint union A i i equal to 1 to n. So, whenever the union is disjoint sets square wise disjoints we will write it as by a square uh, union a symbol for cup with a square a kind a square uh, instead of writing it as usual. Okay. So, where a i s belong to the algebra a. Now, so I can also write it as union of a i i equal to 1 to infinity right? where a i is equal to empty set if i is bigger than n from n onwards let us put them as empty sets. Then a is a countable union of pairwise disjoint sets. So, implies by countable additive property that mu of a is equal to summation mu of a i is i equal to 1 to infinity, but that is same as sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of a i, because for i bigger than or equal to n plus 1, the sets are empty and mu of the empty set is given to be 0. So, therefore, implies mu finitely additive. On the other side, let us try to prove that mu is countably subadditive. So, let us take a set a in the algebra and let us say this is contained in union of a i is i equal to 1 to infinity. Okay. Now, let us observe the following namely this union a i i equal to 1 to infinity where a i's are in the algebra a. If you recall we had shown that any countable union of sets in the algebra can be written as a countable union of disjoint sets in the algebra, where again b i's are in the algebra, but this is a disjoint union. 
How did we do that? Let us just recall we defined B 1 to be equal to A 1 and in general B n to be equal to A n minus union A i, i equal to 1 to n minus 1 and so on. So, that is how we have defined those sets B i and note at every stage B 1 is A 1, A 1 in the algebra. So, B 1 in the algebra similarly B n is A n which is in the algebra finite union A i 1 to n minus 1 that is in the algebra and the difference of the two sets in the algebra is again in the algebra. So, each B n is a element of the algebra, these are disjoint and their union because union of B n B up to B n the same as union up to A 1 to A n and that is true for every n. So, this is equal to true. So, once that is done, so using these two things now let us write that uh, mu of uh, okay, A is a subset of this. Uh, so, this is mu of the union A i is i equal to 1 to infinity will be equal to summation mu of B i is i equal to 1 to infinity, because this union A i is same as union B i is okay, and union of B i is there is a disjoint union. So, by countable additive property mu of the union is equal to this sum. Right? And now note B i is a, each B n is a subset of A n. So, this is less than or equal to by finite entity property monotone property this is less than mu of A n A i i equal to 1 to n. So, what we have shown is that sigma. Uh, so, what we have shown is the following namely that uh, mu of union A i i equal to 1 to infinity is less than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i. Right? And now, we just want to conclude that in fact, mu of a is less than or equal to this quantity. So, now let us observe a is a subset of union a i. So, this implies I can write a is equal to union of a intersection a i i equal to 1 to infinity right i can just intersect and then this is an equality okay so that means mu of a is equal to mu of union i equal to 1 to infinity a intersection a i and this is less than or equal to because um, this is this union is a subset of the union. So, this is less than mu of union i equal to 1 to infinity of a i s, because each one is a subset of this. So, this union is a subset of this and now from here this is less than or equal to mu of uh, summation i equal to 1 to infinity of mu of a i. So, we have shown that whenever a is an element in the algebra is a subset of union of a i is i equal to 1 to infinity, then mu of a is less than or equal to summation mu of a i is. So, that proves that mu is countably subadditive. So, we have shown if mu is countably additive, then this implies mu is finitely additive and also mu is countably subadditive. So, that completes one part of the proof let us uh, uh, prove the other way around implication namely. So, we want to show. So, assume nu is finitely additive and mu is countably sub additive. to show mu is countably additive. So,
So, let us choose the proof. So, how to prove countable additivity? What it show? Let A belong to algebra and A be equal to this joint union A i is equal to 1 to infinity A i is belonging to algebra. And we have to show mu of A is summation mu of A i is. Now, by countable additive prop countable sub additive property which is given to us, this implies countable sub additive implies that mu of A is at least less than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mu of A i s. So, countable sub additivity implies this fact that this is less than or equal to this. So, we have to prove only the other way. So, to show that mu of A is also greater than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mu of A i. Right? So, this is what you have to show. And note, so here is a small observation to show this enough to show it is enough to show that mu of A is bigger than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of A i for every n. So, if we can show for every n mu of A is bigger than or equal to this, then it also will be true for i equal to 1 to infinity, because this is nothing but limit of this partial sums. So, this is enough to show. So, we have to only show that mu of A is bigger than or equal to sigma mu of A is i equal to 1 to n. And to show that, let us observe. So, note that A equal to union A i, i equal to 1 to infinity implies for every n, the union A i, i equal to 1 to n is a subset of A for every n. right? And we are in the algebra. So, this set is in the algebra, this is in the algebra. Mu finitely additive implies mu monotone and hence implies that mu of the union A i, i equal to 1 to n will be less than or equal to mu of A for every n. But again by finite additivity, this is nothing but sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of A i is less than or equal to mu of A for every n. And this is happening for every n. So, this implies we can let n go to infinity. So, i equal to 1 to infinity mu of A i is less than or equal to mu of A. So, that proves the other way around inequality also of the required thing. So, this proves this. So, that proves that mu is countably additive. So, what we have proved is the following namely. So, we have given a characterization of countable additive property of set functions which are finitely additive. So, if mu of empty set is equal to 0, then mu is countably additive if and only if. So, the note here if and only if we have proved both ways. So, if and only if mu is both finitely additive and countably sub additive. So, this is a characterization of uh, countable additiveness of set functions, but of course, the domain of the set function should be an algebra that is important. So, this is a very useful criterion for countable additivity. We will uh, prove another characterization of uh, countable additivity of uh, set functions uh, in terms of uh, limits uh, uh, increasing and decreasing limits. So, that is given in the and we will state the next theorem, but again that theorem is again about set functions defined on algebras. So, the theorem says the following let A be an algebra of subsets of a set x and mu be finitely additive and with the property of course, mu of empty set is equal to 0. Then we want to prove that mu is countably additive if and only if once again it is a characterization if and only if the following property holds and the property says for any element A in the algebra A, we should have mu of A 
is limit of mu of a n's. What are a n's? Whenever a n is a sequence of sets in the algebra, which is decreasing. So, a n is a subset of a n plus 1 for every n. The sequence a n should be decreasing and a should be equal uh, a, a n sorry a n should be increasing a n is a subset of a n plus 1. That means, a n s are increasing sequence of sets in the algebra and a is the union of all these sets a n. So, this is a characterization of countable additiveness of the set function mu provided one can prove the following for any set A and for any sequence A n of sets in the algebra which is increasing and A is the union, we should have mu of A equal to limit mu of A n. So, let us uh, prove this property once again. So, to prove this, what we have to show? First, let us prove. So, let mu be countably additive. So, let mu be countable additive to show we have to show the following. Let take a set A belonging to the algebra, take a sequence A n s belonging to the algebra such that A n is subset of A n plus 1 and A is equal to union of A n s we should show that mu of a is equal to limit n going to infinity mu of a n s. So, that is what is to be shown. So, let us uh, now let us observe a is union of a n s and we are given something about countable additivity. So, the obvious thing is try to write this union as a countable disjoint union. So, we do that. So, proof let B n be defined as A n minus union A i, i equal to 1 to n minus 1 for every n bigger than or equal to 1. Then as observed, as observed earlier, each B n belongs to the algebra. B n's are disjoint and a which is union of a n s is also equal to union of b n s. Of course, this is disjoint. So, let me write it equal to this. So, implies by countable additive property mu of a is equal to mu of this union b n s and that is equal to by countable additive property that is summation n equal to 1 to infinity mu of b n s. So, that is by countable additive property and now, but we do not want b n s, we want something in terms of a n s. So, here is an observation this summation I can write as limit k going to infinity of the partial sums. So, n equal to 1 to k of mu of b n s but b n s are disjoint. So, this is same as limit k going to infinity of mu of union b, uh, b n n equal to 1 to k, because b n s are disjoint by finite additive property this pro must be true. And we are one, so note uh, once again use mu is given to be countable additive and hence it is finitely additive and by finite additive property this is true. And this is now the observation is that the union of b n s n equal to 1 to k is same as the union of a's. So, this is same as k going to infinity mu of union a n union of a n n equal to 1 to k. But note, we have not used anywhere the fact that a n s are increasing. So, in since a n s are increasing, what is this union? This union is precisely mu of the largest set that is a k. 
so that is mu of a k. So, what we have shown is that mu of a, so we have shown mu of a is limit of mu of a k is going to infinity. Whenever a n is a sequence which is increasing, whenever a n is increasing and a is equal to union. So, we have proved one way countable additivity prime, uh, implies the required property. Let us look at the converse. So, conversely, so let us assume mu has the given property and what is the given property? Given property says whenever a set A is written as union of A n's, A n's are increasing then mu of A is equal to mu of the union. So, we want to prove to show to show mu is countably additive that is let us take a set A, which is disjoint union of sets A n, n equal to 1 to infinity, where A and all A n's are in the algebra. Right? We have to show that mu of A is equal to summation mu of A n's, but this I can write it as union over k 1 to infinity union A n n equal to 1 to k. So, take instead of taking n equal to 1 to infinity, take union of sets a 1 a 2 a k and then take the union over k, both will be same. right? But the advantage of this way is now, if we call this as b k, then b k is a set in the algebra, because it is a finite union of sets in the algebra. b k is increasing, because we are taking union of more and more sets and their union is equal to a. So, by the given property, so by the given hypothesis mu of a is equal to limit k going to infinity mu of b k. And now, let us go back to represent b k in terms of a's. So, that is limit k going to infinity mu of union a n n equal to 1 to k. And now, we use the fact that mu is finitely additive. Okay. So, this is limit k going to infinity summation n equal to 1 to k of mu of a n's and which is same as sigma 1 to infinity of mu of a n's. So, that says whenever A is a disjoint union of countable disjoint union of sets in the algebra, mu of A is mu of sigma mu of A n s and that is countable additive property of uh, the um, set function. So, we have proved uh, the theorem completely namely, if A is an algebra of subsets of a set x and mu is finitely additive with that property then mu is countably additive if and only if mu has the property that mu of a is the limit of mu of a n s whenever a n is increasing and a n is equal to union of the sets. So, this is characterizing countable additivity in terms of limits of increasing sequence of sets and this property one says that mu is continuous from below at the point a. So, countable additivity for finitely additive set functions is same as saying they are continuous from below at the point A. From below, because A is union of these sets. So, from below. There is a corresponding result for uh, sequences which are decreasing. So, let us state that result and uh, prove it also that if A is an algebra of subsets of a set x and mu is finitely additive. So, that conditions are same as it is. Plus, we want additional condition that mu of the whole space is finite. So, this is the additional condition put uh, to prove uh, to state the result namely mu of the whole space is finite. So, it says mu is countably additive if and only if the following holds namely for any set A in A whenever mu of a is equal to limit n going to infinity mu of a n, 
and whenever a n s are decreasing. So, a n plus 1 is subset of a n and a is the intersection. He says, so countable additivity is equal to saying for every set a in the algebra, if a is intersection of a decreasing sequence of sets a n s, then mu of a must be equal to limit of a n s. And the proof of this uh, uses the earlier theorem. So, let us assume mu is countably additive and a n s decrease to a all uh, in the algebra a. To show, we want to show that mu of a is equal to mu of a n s. Uh, to show mu of a is limit n going to infinity mu of a n. Now, we know something about increasing sequences. So, from decreasing we want to manufacture a increasing sequence and that is done via complements. So, define B n to be equal to x minus a n for every n. Then B n each B n belongs to the algebra A. B n is decreasing because a n's are uh, B n's are sorry increasing as a n's are decreasing. Okay, and where do they decrease? So they uh, B n's increase to x minus a because a n's are decreasing to a. So by the earlier theorem we have so countable additivity implies whenever a sequence is increasing mu of x minus a must be equal to limit n going to infinity mu of x minus b n. But now we use the fact that mu of x is finite. So, this is same as mu of x minus mu of a and this thing is equal to mu of x minus mu of b n and this is possible only because we have the fact that mu of the whole space is finite. So, everything is a finite quantity and we have already shown mu of the difference is equal to difference of mu's provided the things are finite. So, this is equal to limit of this. So, now x cancels negative sign. So, limit. So, mu of a is equal to limit mu of a n s n going to infinity. So, this is countable additivity implies this. The other way around property. So, let us assume this has that property that whenever a n s increase. So, so, mu has required given property to show mu is countably additive. So, let us take a equal to a disjoint union a i s. Then, then uh, this is what is x uh, minus a that is intersection of i equal to 1 to infinity x minus. So, uh, let us write this as uh, union of uh, i uh, n equal to 1 to infinity union of a i s i equal to 1 to n. So, these are the sets. Uh, uh, okay. So, then it is x minus uh, union a i i equal to 1 to n. So, that is equal to intersection i equal to 1 to n and this things nothing but okay, x minus. Uh, so, let us call this as a, B, uh, a set as B n. So, let us call this as B n. Right. So, now note B n s are decreasing and they are in the algebra because the A n s are union n this will be increasing. So, this will be decreasing. So, mu of uh, x minus a by the given hypothesis is limit n going to infinity mu of b n s. And what is mu of b n? Mu of b n is x minus this. So, that is equal to mu of x minus. So, limit n going to infinity mu of the union that is this joint. So, summation i equal to 1 to n mu of a n s and this thing is equal to mu of x minus mu of a because everything is finite. So, this cancels with this. 
So, mu of a is limit of this which is equal to sigma 1 to infinity mu of a n. So, that proves countable additive of t. So, uh, we have proved that when mu is uh, countably uh, mu is countably additive if and only if uh, for a decreasing sequence of sets a n a equal to this intersection mu of a is the limit under the condition mu of x is finite. So, this is important and this condition cannot be removed um, that is the next. Uh, uh, so, this kind of thing is called continuity from uh, above and here is a so remark that the condition mu of x is finite is necessary in the uh, second part and cannot be removed. So, that will uh, request you to uh, construct an example. You can uh, construct a very easily an example on the real line with the uh, uh, length function uh, as the set function. And here is an exercise for you to uh, do that is finitely such that mu of is finite. So, last part we said a n decreasing to a that you can uh, actually reduce a, uh, a bit says whenever a n s are decreasing to empty set that is also equivalent to saying that mu is countable relative. So, these two parts will uh, like you uh, to explore and understand and answer these questions. So, thank you. Let us stop today. Thanks.